there, Kazen here, and welcome back to Always Doing. It's actually a sunny day here. It has been so long since we've had a properly sunny day. We had two weeks of rain, and then we had a typhoon actually that just came through yesterday. It missed us. We missed the worst part, but we still got a bunch of rain and a bunch of leaves and, you know, tree limbs and things flew all around. But Everyone's fine, it all turned out okay, and it's a beautiful day to tell you about my Latinxathon wrap up. If this is your first time hearing about Latinxathon, it's a brand new readathon uh, put on by four lovely ladies, and it's to encourage you to read books written by Latinx authors and with Latinx main characters. I'll put all the information down below as well as links to my TBR video and my um, recommendation video. I had a great Latinxathon. I had to start a little late, but it was a beautiful Sunday morning and I managed to get in the first couple chapters in False Calm by Maria Sonia Kristoff, translated by Catherine Silver. This is nonfiction about towns that went through the oil boom and bust in Patagonia. I loved what I read. It's absolutely atmospheric. The author goes to different tiny little towns and basically hangs out until the locals kind of get used to her and she finds that she doesn't even have to ask many questions, that people tell her their stories. And that's what she's writing down. It rewards a clear mind and quiet, uninterrupted time to really sink yourself in. It's not that the language is difficult, but you kind of get transported to this place and it's hard to stop in the middle. I had a busy week. I had a lot of work actually. And the news was crazy and you don't have to look it up, just trust me, it was crazy. So I didn't quite have enough brain power to give this book as I wanted. I read it that one Sunday morning and unfortunately got put aside for the rest of the readathon. I will be continuing it and I'm pretty sure I'll be finishing it in the next little bit. I just needed things to calm down a bit. It wasn't a great read for my scattered brain. I did finish two books. One was Tell Me How It Ends, an essay in 40 questions by Valeria Luiselli. She was she still may be, actually, I don't know, but an interpreter, and she worked in the immigration court system. And when I heard that, I thought she was going to be in the courtroom interpreting, but it turns out that she was working with lawyers and nonprofit groups before a case went to trial. This was during the 2014 immigrant slash refugee crisis when many unaccompanied minors, kids, were coming up from Central America through Mexico to reach the United States border. So with this influx of kids, the Obama administration decided to make an expedited docket, basically doing more and more of these immigration cases of unaccompanied minors, So and very quickly. So before, I think the average time for someone to be in the United States with a relative before their case came up was 13 months, I believe. And with this expedition of the process, it really cut down on their time, which is not great because it takes time to get a lawyer, it takes time to get a case together. So she worked as an interpreter, helping a nonprofit group basically screen kids, try and see who has a solid case to ask for refugee status or some other kind of immigration status so that they can stay in the United States and not be deported. There was a list with 40 questions and then the lawyers would look over that list and see basically who has a decent case and who they might be able to help. I learned a lot about immigration at this time and a lot of it still holds true today. Luiselli doesn't make it overly, like she doesn't knife you in the heart too many times, but the, the facts are horrendous. 80% of women and girls who travel through Mexico to get to the US border are raped. She talks about La Bestia, which is what the kids call the freight train that they ride in order to go north, and how in a moment of not paying attention it's very easy to die or lose a limb. As an interpreter myself, I was really curious to see what Luiselli would talk about, especially as far as ethics are concerned. Because she's working with these kids, not in a courtroom, but with a nonprofit organization, she is held to a little different standard. As an interpreter, what you do is you don't add anything, you don't subtract anything, and you do your darndest to not change anything, not even nuance, which is incredibly difficult. But she talks about, you know, writing exactly what the kids say on the questionnaires. You can't soup it up 
because you know it'll help them you know have a better case you have to write down exactly what they say at the same time there was one point where she went against the grain and i was like no because <laughs> when she has a kid who's talking to a lawyer and they have a you know some coffee and and snacks out and they ask would you like something and he says well i'll have some of everything if it's free and she just said oh i'll have a cookie thank you it softens over the social situation but technically, if you're in a court of law, if you're in healthcare interpreting, if you're in many, many different kinds of interpreting, you can't do that. But otherwise, um, I liked how she talked about interpreting being bearing witness, which is something that I found myself. The interpreter tries to stay as transparent as possible. And because of that, often one of the only things we can do is bear witness. And it's still a powerful and, and meaningful thing to do as well as it can be extremely frustrating. The book is short and I read it on audio. I think it was only two and a half hours. I barely, I just sped it up just a tiny touch. I really liked the narration, it was well done. And I can't speak to how well she said the Spanish phrases because I don't speak Spanish myself, but it wasn't so awful that I noticed, so something. This book was also a great reminder that the immigration crisis did not start with the current U.S. president, but that the Obama administration actually put in place many policies that really hurt immigrants. And if you want to know more about this, obviously read the book, but also check out the podcast In the Thick, which is um, news and current events from a POC perspective. And the two hosts, one is Puerto Rican and one is Mexican, and they bring on all these interesting different guests that are people of color and some are LBGTQIA and all different marginalized groups. And it really opens my mind to what's happening and isn't necessarily being reported in the mainstream news. Overall, really good book if you want to know more about this issue and you don't mind getting teary, at least if you're like me. And the other book I finished I absolutely loved and it's Acting on Impulse by Mia Sosa. It's the first book in her Love on Cue series. As you can probably tell by the cover, it's a contemporary romance. Tori is a fitness trainer and her minor celebrity boyfriend broke up with her in a public, not cool at all way. And she's just decided she needs to get away from the media and everything else. So she books a quick vacation to Aruba. The person on the plane next to her is Carter and they start talking a little bit, hit it off, and they end up staying at the same resort. The thing is, is that Carter is a Hollywood heartthrob. He lost a ton of weight for his latest role. As a result of the weight loss, he's unrecognizable. He's using his real name instead of the name he uses as an actor. So Tori has no idea who he is. Until he gets outed, it doesn't go over well because she's done the celebrity thing. She doesn't want to be in a relationship with anyone in the spotlight while they're still very much attracted to each other. So how do they work that out? There is so much good in this book. So if you want a really detailed list and going through of all these points, check out my written review, which I will link down below. But to go through many of them quickly here, Number one, we have an own voices author. The heroine is Puerto Rican and the author is also Puerto Rican and Afro-Latinx. The cast is very diverse. There's only one main character, as far as I can tell, who is white and that's our hero. And it's diverse upon racial lines and also with ability. We're shown some minor, minor characters in wheelchairs or dealing with chronic medical conditions. In romance, there's something called competence porn and is often but not always applied to heroines. And it's used when they have a successful career and both the narrative and the, their partner support them in it. We have that all over the place. Tori is a great fitness trainer. Carter is a good actor. People may have different levels of confidence in what they do and it, there may be some misgivings and mishaps, but somebody sucking at their job is never a plot point. Minor characters are well developed. I'm so excited to see them each get their own happily ever after, especially Eva, who is Tori's roommate and best friend. And she is amazing. She reminds me of my own best friend in the way that they know you so well. Eva and Tori always put each other before whatever guy they happen to be dating. And it just, this is the way 
I've experienced female friendships, and it really warmed my heart to see that on the page instead of the usual snippy, you know, backstabbing stuff that some authors think is the only female relationship available. Another thing I like is Tori calls out potentially problematic stuff, especially when it comes from Carter. If he says something not intentionally problematic, but slightly problematic, she'll go right up and she'll say, hey, what you said just now wasn't cool because X, Y, Z. And it's modeled good behavior because Carter goes, oh my gosh, I didn't realize. And he apologizes sincerely and promises not to do it again. And the way that's handled is just, it's so good. In that vein, there are other little things that fit together so well, just nice little touches. Some stereotypes are subverted and it's never anything too big. For example, she's on the plane and she sees the flight attendant and she asks him for a drink. Just that little, that little tiny thing, just using the pronoun him for flight attendant when in many of our mind's eye, the first person you picture at that is a, is a woman, usually a young woman. I love that kind of stuff. It's tiny, but it's meaningful. Spanish is sprinkled throughout the book and it is italicized. However, it's not translated every time, which I love. Some of it, if you know any little tiny bit of Spanish, you probably know it. Other times you can surely guess that she's calling the hero names. It's so much better than rotely translating everything immediately after it's said. Sometimes she realizes that she's speaking with a non-Spanish speaker and she'll throw in a gloss afterward, but not always, and it, it works. Looking online, some people thought there were a few too many coincidences in the beginning, but that didn't bother me. There is a bit of insta-lust when they first meet on the plane. Carter is like, oh, that's obviously my future wife in 12A, and eh, it, I thought it was cute. It is a slow burn, so go in realizing that. Even so, the sex is incredibly hot once you get there, but it is, it takes a while to get there. So I absolutely loved it. This was the book I was reading on the train, in spare moments, on my commute, whenever I could, and it put a smile on my face, it made me giggle, and it brightened my mood during what was a difficult week just world-wise. And that's, that's what romance is for. It's for many things, but that's one of the things romance is for. So there we have it, my Latin Exathon wrap-up. How did your Latin Exathon go? Have you read any of these books? Let's talk about them in the comments, and feel free to subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.